When it comes to people like Jamie Dimon and others, I'm thrilled that they want to support us. We'll take all the support we can. Mm, that is interesting. You know what else is interesting about this? Oh, well, I can't wait to talk to Carol about this. Jamie Dimon. Obviously, Jamie Dimon is a name most people know well. If you watch this show, you know it well. But Jamie Dimon, I feel like he was involved in the announcement. He was going to be involved in building up Ukraine after the Russia-Ukraine thing was over. Huh. Anyway, I wonder what Carol thinks about all that. Joining me now, the great Carol Roth, author of now multiple wonderful books. Her latest one is You Will Own Nothing. That is the one that sits on my son's nightstand. He loves that freaking book so much. It's awesome. Carol, Jamie Dimon. Man, his name sure does come up a lot when we discuss these major things. Yeah, Jamie Dimon is OG. A funny story, at one point in time, I had him on a list to be my third husband, not the second one. I didn't have a second one identified. Um, but over time, I realized he was going to be too old by the time that all happened. But anyway, I digressed. Um, you know, he is an OG in the business arena. And anytime something comes up, he is sort of uh, firmly inserted himself in the middle of things. I will say, of all of the elitists, um, um, he probably has the firmest grasp on reality, but obviously he's got a lot of skin in the game. So every time that he speaks, there is, uh, you know, so, some specific incentive that he's driving. Carol, okay, help me understand why Wall Street would pick a certain candidate over another. You're, as you call yourself, a recovering investment banker. It's very yeah. obvious. They're kind of sour on Joe. Apparently, they looked at the other candidates in the field, the Trump, the Santos, the whatever types, and they didn't like what they saw, but they really like what they see in Nikki Haley. Why? So this is a very interesting question, one that maybe you know, 10 years ago would have had a very clear and obvious answer. But when you look at who the Wall Street candidate was the last time around, who the candidate that uh, everybody gave their money to, it was none other than Joe Biden. And we saw how that turned out for the economy and, you know, frankly, for a lot of the different players on Wall Street, even though stocks have been up this, uh, this past year. Usually, you want somebody who is pro-business, at least big business, pro-cronyism, um, you know, friendly to the uh, the interests of growing the economy and making the, the rich richer. So maybe he did a little bit of that uh, in the beginning, but you know, it had a, a very unhappy ending, as we all know, knew it would. And I don't think that's the way Wall Street would want it uh, to go about. So if this were a normal world, you would say Wall Street is backing the candidate that would they think is going to scratch their backs and, and be good for big business. But given the fact that they backed Joe Biden last time around, you know, all bets are off the table. We no longer live in a normal world, Jesse. No, we certainly do not. Speaking of abnormal, crypto. <laughs> anyway, Jamie Dimon had this to say about crypto. I've always been deeply opposed to crypto, Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, and that is a use case, uh, because it is somewhat anonymous, not fully, and because you can move money instantaneously, and because it doesn't go through, as you mentioned, all these systems have built up over many years, you know your customers, sanctions, OFAC, it's, they can get bypass all of that. I, if I was the government, I'd close it down. Okay. Okay, uh, Carol, I am not a crypto guy. I don't have anything against it. I have many friends who are. I'm just 42 going on 82, and I don't understand it. But Jamie Dimon being against it tells me maybe it's something I should show more interest in. Yeah, it's um, it's really shocking, Jesse, completely shocking that somebody who benefits from fiat currency, monetary policy, and being in that power circle who controls uh, our money supply wouldn't want to give up that power. Isn't that a complete shock to everyone? And that's always been the the pushback against crypto, um, you know, from the top, and and why, frankly, a central bank digital currency is something that has been on the radar because those with the power to control the money 
money supply don't want to give that up. And Bitcoin is a direct threat. Uh, I am not really a Bitcoin person either. I tend to be more of a physical uh, precious metals, gold and silver kind of gal myself. Um, but for him to say that the only use case is for criminals is ridiculous. The reason why many people have bought into Bitcoin, both literally and figuratively, is because they don't like what has happened to the manipulation of our currency. We have seen the currency bit, uh, debased significantly. Obviously, we've, we're all feeling the effects of the inflation that has happened based on the monetary policy. And that's why people are concerned with that in the U.S.'s financial position position that they want to have an alternative. Now, again, you have different options for alternatives and I'm old school, so I pick a different one. And as somebody who is pro Bitcoin will be able to give you the reasons why you might think that's a, a good one to pick as your alternative. But for him to say that it's only for criminals is purely just him protecting his domain and terrain. Carol, a report came out, said the average person now needs $11,400 more than they needed before to afford the basics. You and I have had this conversation a million times. The average person watching their standard of living go down and down and down. Are they making adjustments with their consumer spending? Because as you have pointed out to us many times, that's what drives our economy, consumer spending. Yes, uh, this is something that you and I both predicted. I had said $10,000 a year was even more than the, the prediction. Um, what has happened with the consumer, as we talked about, and as you noted, the consumer is about 70% of the economy. And so what the consum consumer does best is spend. And so this $11,400 is them having to spend more on the things that are their basic day to day. And they just keep going into their own balance sheet in order to be able to pay for that. That means the personal saving rate has come down. It's now sitting at about 3.8%. It was over, I think it was 4.4% to start the year. Uh, we know that debt rates, uh, the, the amount of debt, not the rate of debt, but the amount of debt has gone through the roof. That is at all time high. Um, credit card debt is around $1.1 trillion. There are a lot of people using um, alternatives like buy now, pay later as a form of deferring the payment. And so they're really trying to keep up with their previous standard of living, having to spend more, but not necessarily having that same amount of cash in the bank. So they're going to continue to do that probably as long as their job remains. What we're seeing though is a shift of the job openings. We, uh, I think it was about a year and a half ago, you and I talked about there was almost two job openings available for every job seeker. Now we're down to about 1.3. And so that's really shrinking up. And as the job market you know, com you know, potentially changes around and people are worried about their job um, and hopefully it's not even a case of, of losing Losing it, but just cons more concerned about it, that may be a trigger for them to pull back. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of analysts um, projecting that we could end up in a recession at some point next year. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Carol, on that note, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you very much.